Hello Bloomington, I'm Mayor Tim Bussey, and this is the Council Minute for the week of February 27th. First off today, I want to express my heartfelt thanks to the entire Bloomington City staff for the incredible job they did last week digging the city out from more than a foot of February snow. I know it wasn't the snowmageddon that some predicted, but 13 inches of snow is still a good sized storm. And the fact that it fell over the course of three days made things even the more challenging. I'm proud of the work that our staff did to keep the city safe and moving. So beyond the 13 inches of snow, here are some numbers for you. Here in Bloomington, we have more than 2,000 lane miles of streets. We have 250 miles of sidewalks and more than 500 cul-de-sacs. And officially, there are 28 plow operators in our street maintenance division. But when the snow falls, whether it's the big totals like we saw last week or just five or six inches, snow removal becomes the responsibility of multiple departments across the city. Street maintenance takes the lead and coordinates and communicates with park and recreation, facilities, fleet services, and utilities. They are all part of the snow removal team. And of course, public safety like police and fire also have plenty to do when a snowstorm hits. Plowing out the city is a big job, and I hope everyone appreciates the time and hard work and resources that goes into making sure it happens and is done well. And we can't overlook the efforts throughout the community during a big snow event. Simply getting cars off the street when a snow emergency is called is enormously helpful. And I heard and read of dozens of examples of neighbors helping neighbors. Thank you so much for that. And of course, digging out fire hydrants is always appreciated. At the risk of being Captain Obvious, it's been a tough winter. Last week wasn't even the biggest snowfall of the year, and we've blown way past our average of 50 inches of snow for the winter. Between the snow, the rain, the ice, it's been a challenge keeping the streets and sidewalks and trails clear. Hats off to our city staff for the great work they have done. And given that we're just getting into March, the great work they almost certainly will be doing again in the weeks ahead. Last week, the Bloomington Port Authority officially welcomed Holly Masick as our new Port Authority Administrator. Holly comes to Bloomington from the Rochester Downtown Alliance, where she served as director for almost four years. I'm very excited to welcome Holly on board. I'm also excited because it continues the momentum and solid work we have underway here in Bloomington in the area of economic development. You might recall that last fall, the council approved a restructuring of the Housing and Redevelopment Authority and the Port Authority in a way that refocused their work to better serve Bloomington's housing and economic development goals. For three decades, the Bloomington Port Authority has been a very successful economic development agency that works to expand the city's tax base, promote and attract quality job opportunities, and supports real estate redevelopment and economic development. The restructuring, which was the result of an analysis done by an outside consultant, expands the Port Authority's role to more actively include business development, expansion, and retention. And it restructures staff to meet these priorities. I think it goes without saying that business development, expansion, and retention is a vital part of cultivating an enduring and remarkable community where people want to be. The Port Authority's role is just one part of an overall city strategy to build and strengthen our business community. Regionally, Bloomington has an active role in the Minneapolis Regional Chamber of Commerce. The city was an original investor in Grainer MSP, our regional economic development partnership, and we work almost daily with the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development. Closer to home, city staff and elected officials work very closely with the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau to ensure the strength of the hospitality industry. And I'm sure you've heard that we're in the process of developing a small business development center on the city's east side. We also partner with Hennepin County and the Metropolitan Council whenever possible. And we acknowledge that Bloomington is part of a global economy. Bloomington is active with the Minneapolis-St. Paul Foreign Trade Zone. We've hosted Hiroshi Tajima, the Consul General of Japan, and last week I attended an event in Chicago at the Consulate General's office. And last year I was proud to be part of an event with the German-American Chamber of Commerce. And of course, if we land the World Expo, it affirms that our reach is truly global. With a strong and stable economy, good transportation infrastructure in place, and a hard-working, well-educated workforce, we know that Bloomington is a great place to do business. I feel good about the existing and growing efforts we have in place to tell that good story to businesses, both big and small. We've seen results. Sick Industries locating their North American headquarters here is the most recent example, but like a lot of our work, this is a marathon, not a sprint. I'm confident that our steady, systematic work will continue to pay off for Bloomington in terms of jobs and economic development now and in the future. 
Finally today, on Monday night, the council had a good discussion about city business licenses, about the process of doing licensing, the fees charged, and the rationale behind what we do. It's very day-to-day -day municipal business, and it takes place in city halls across Minnesota. And I appreciate that staff took a close look at some possible ways to do things better. For example, state law requires that cities approve liquor licenses. And here in Bloomington, we have a process in place that includes background checks and site visits and a public hearing on any proposed liquor license. So whether it's a new or temporary license or a renewal, a public hearing is required. Now, while Minnesota requires that cities grant liquor licenses, there is no mention of a public hearing. In my time on the council, I've been part of hundreds of public hearings for a new or renewed liquor license, and I honestly can't remember anyone, not one person, speaking at one of those public hearings. We know there's a cost that comes with a public hearing, whether it's staff time or the cost of posting notice of the hearing. And there's also typically a lag of at least a couple of weeks that comes with any public hearing because we need to publish an announcement of the public hearing in the Sun Current, and that can sometimes slow down the opening of a bar or a restaurant. The bottom line is that in this instance, a public hearing is not very efficient, and you could argue that it's probably not needed. So on Monday night, staff proposed approving liquor licenses as part of our consent agenda, rather than through a public hearing. The background checks and the site inspections and other license requirements would still say the same, but eliminating the public hearing requirement would decrease the time needed for it to process a license by at least three weeks. It would provide flexibility for city staff and the applicant and it would save money. Staff also proposed similar changes to our massage therapy license approval process, to the fees that we charge for laundromats and amusement devices, and to our taxi cab licensing. If approved, those changes would make the process more efficient for both the applicants and staff, they would make the fees easier to understand, and would match code to current licensing needs. Now, I'd be willing to guess that a vast majority of you will never notice the changes but it will make a difference for those businesses that are affected and at the same time it does not impact the businesses do rights processes. It's a good example of the work being done by staff to improve efficiency and productivity here at City Hall and to make Bloomington a bit more business friendly. It really is a good opportunity to be better, faster, and less costly. That is a wrap on this week's Council Minute. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe Bloomington.